The next gen Witcher 3 Wild Hunt didn't only bring the enhanced version of Witcher 3, but also brought some minor problems with the performance. CD Projekt Red of course targeted those issues within few days and rapidly made her fixes, however, this is not the only thing that they've implemented. Some new things like cutscenes in the next gen installment are a thing. As I mentioned, the Witcher 3 next gen update brought us some fresh content. CD Projekt Red made fans search for new hints, easter eggs or references once again, and there are plenty of newly implemented dialogues or scenes that weren't in the original game. The first striking difference is the expanded romance with Rienefer, but that's not the only one thing. There's a longer horse ride around Book Claire with Anna Henrietta, or a dialogue where she tells us about her family ties with Emmeher, the Nilfgaard Emperor. Vesemir might also tell us a little bit more about Kermoran or Triss about Ingrid Velibert. So the next gen update didn't give us only some new graphics and a new quest, but also expanded its actual content and, well, made us curious about it once again. So, again something about Witcher, the blood origins, the beauty of Witcher, again in Netflix adaptation, this… this… <laughs> what the f is this? And that's the reaction of most viewers. Simply everybody hammered the show and it happened. Now Blood Origins has taken the spot of the worst rated show on Netflix. Rotten Tomatoes, here it is. People have spoken 10% and many articles, videos and reviews are there that were made with one certain common goal. To criticize this production, this creation or abomination I shall say, is just a lowbrow fantasy show. The only pros of this invention could be counted on the fingers of one hand. The problem is that I don't even know many and it seems every single review suffers from the same thing. There are plenty of mistakes listed, like the generic and plain story which has nothing to do with the Witcher franchise, dual characters and up to none of their development development, completely wasted potential of expanding the universe, and of course the popular wokeism, that's a word, of series. If there are any plausible elements, the totally negative ones cover and outshine them. This is the moment where we actually should start to wonder what awaits us in the third season of the original Witcher. Henry Cavill resigned, now the complete failure of Blood Origins, and the disgust after the last season still lasts, let's be honest. And let's not forget that Netflix had a lot of plans towards Sapkowski's franchise. It was supposed to be their branded product, a gem of this platform, like Game of Thrones is for HBO, but now, now it looks more like a quick money milking to attract viewers to networks by using the Witcher's name. And as we know, this platform has struggled quite a lot recently with viewers and people just cancelling the subscriptions plans. Sticking to the shows and all that kind of subjects, The Last of Us adaptation by HBO is right around the corner. On the 16th of January, this production is due to air and give us some chance to appreciate Slow once again. <laughs> exactly, will we appreciate it? Apparently Troy Baker, the voice actor of Joel in the games, fell in love with this production and from his statement there is nothing to be afraid of. I've seen up to episode 5 and I can tell you right now, you get episode 3, you're done. You're standing on your desk, oh captain, my captain, like what is the meaning behind that? What it sets up in the first two episodes introduces you to the world if you have no idea what it is. It takes all of your expectations and just gets rid of them. We've been informed that the Glass of Us might be close to adapt the game's source material and that it will honor this title, but there's one but. It will significantly change some parts of the story, however, rather than rewriting and changing the personality of almost every character, yes Netflix, your guilt here, it's bound to expand some parts of Joel and Ellie's adventures so that we get to know something new about them. HBO Latino has already informed us that the first episode is going to last 85 minutes. That's a really impressive value as one and a half hour isn't a standard for shows. However, this is the only episode that is supposed to get that long duration, the rest will be around a common 50 minutes long. It's assumed by many that the first episode might have expanded the prologue of the game and showcased as more in-depth look. We will likely experience more scenes shot during the day, so that virtually means life during quarantine will appear on our screens. The outfalls of HBO's show are are mainly devoted to less violent storytelling. As we know, they tried to cut off 
any unnecessary bits of violence from the episodes and focus to give it to the audience only when it will be crucial. There are going to be few changes in Joel's character too, but don't worry, his character will be enhanced with some new traits as well as his overall lifestyle. From the creator's statements, they had a conversation about how Joel's life would have impacted him physically. So he is hard of hearing on one side because of a gunshot, his knees hurt every time he stands up. I guess there's a tone where Tom Cruise can do anything, but I like middle-aged people. Middle-aged. It's a nice little atom from this producers and I think this way of portraying Joel's character is going to be really beneficial to his already great persona. The showrunner also referred to the hate towards their pick for Ellie. Bella Ramsey is often mentioned as the complete opposite of how Ellie looks in the games, however, in terms of Craig Mason's words, she was the perfect pick. Apparently for that role for nearly 100 actresses, so Ellie took a bit longer because it's harder role to cast. Trying to cast a 14 year old and acting is an incredible thing to do, right? And it's easy to do it terribly. It's a hard thing to do okay, but it's a hard thing to do it brilliantly. And children haven't had that much life experience, so it's hard to find kids that can embody this. Plus, she needs to be funny, tough, violent and protective of herself at the same time. She also needs to make us believe that she's going to have this connection with Joel, so it obviously took longer. Whatever is your opinion, you gotta agree that Bella is a terrific actress. Her portrayal of Little Mormon Girl in Game of Thrones was phenomenal and people loved all the scenes with her on screen. I don't think that it will be that tough for the audience to become accustomed to Ellie's new appearance. Maybe this one might shock you, but Nintendo Switch Pro was actually made, but in the end its existence was simply thrown into the bin. Digital Foundry has unveiled some interesting rumors about Switch Pro and why it hasn't been released. As we know, many insiders were certain it will be a purchasable thing, some shops even started their pre-orders, however, finally it has never released. John Lineman revealed that something in between generations of Nintendo was actually planned and worked on, but it turns out nothing like that is going to happen in the end. Lehman has stated that the new Nintendo Switch generation will become a fact, simply called something like Nintendo Switch 2, but it shouldn't be around before 2024. The journalist also rumored that the creators will try to make the most of the current generation in the next year, so that in approximately 15 months we'll witness the release of Nintendo Switch 2. 